Right, we're going to do a little experiment here. I have bought Richard a present, but he has to choose. Will he go for the Porsche Taycan Turbo S? Very fast, um, zero emission, you know, lovely car. Like the Mac Masters, but this one's a Turbo S. I drove that yesterday, so that's quite fitting. Or will he go for the 911 2.7 Carrera? What do you think? What's Richard gonna go for? And we can unsubscribe if he chooses the electric car. <laughs> so, ladies and gentlemen, Richard Vobes, uh, the English couple, the lovely Julia. Um, you don't seem to make videos about walking around looking at things anymore. Tell me about your, we'll do a little bit on your YouTube journey, so. Yeah, so, uh, what, 2017, started walking around the countryside with a GoPro on a stick and talking into that and saying, oh, look, there's a tree. There's another tree. Didn't know what the trees were called, but it was good fun. Then I started to learn about the trees and realized actually trees are quite interesting. Mm. The landscape was interesting, always been interested in heritage. And uh, then somebody got in touch with me and said, oh, I can take you to a nice tree, to a fairy tree. I said, that sounds a bit quirky. Go on then. And the lovely Julia came and told me about a tree, didn't you? Yeah. Oh, right, so, so you're the source of the fairy tree. I'm the one with the fairy tree, yeah. Right, okay, <laughs> got you. So we went to the fairy tree, we made a, a lovely video about a tree in which children put trinkets and things on a tree and it becomes meaningful for them. And then, didn't really think too much about it, but afterwards it went down really well and I said, oh, do you, there's a place in Chichester, or near Chichester, called Kingly Vale that has these two, three thousand year old yew trees. Mm. And they are just amazing, the, the shapes and, and all of that, in a grove right at the bottom of the South Downs. And I said uh, to Julia, I said, do you fancy coming up there? Because she admitted she was a bit of a tree hugger. I was going to say, yeah. that, that first video at the fairy tree um, was when he, he posed the question to me out of the blue. So would you call yourself a tree hugger? And I free, oh, because I've always been bullied for that. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, yes, I would. I, I don't, think, don't think there's anything wrong these days with no, saying you, saying you're a tree hugger. Surely the green movement is based on hugging trees, but the irony is a lot of the green movement involves pulling up the trees to replace it with cycle lanes. Yeah, yeah. that's um, a bit weird. It. So, it so anyway, so we got together, we made these videos, and went round doing all this sort of stuff. And then I got a van, and we were doing van mm. life stuff and camping out and all of that. And then the world, the world was already the wrong way round. Mm. It but went we up was, a notch, didn't it? Yeah, it just kind of like someone got hold of the knob and went mm. And I started to notice this a bit more and I thought, do you know what? We'd gone through a period of very strange times in which the government did a lot of weird things and people took a lot of medicine. Yep. And we got out of that and I was wanting to talk about that, but I thought, oh, it'll frighten off the, frighten off the viewers. And then, November last year, just started uh, watching GB News, mm. and Neil Oliver was on there talking about the fuel crisis at the time and saying, well, what would happen if we all just stopped paying off our fuel um, bills? And I thought, well, is he right? So I made a video just sitting on my chair in, at home and said, is Neil Oliver right? 100,000 views in two or three days later, I thought, yeah. blimey, people want to talk about this. Yeah. And since then, I've been down the rabbit holes, in and out, going, oh my God, down we're all gonna... Warren. Exactly. Yeah. And now uh, you're interviewing some pretty big names. I am. You are sort of looked at as a, as a kind of leading light of... <laughs> I know, it's most ridiculous. It... Don't, don't tell them because I, it, the inferiority, um, what is it, the... Uh... Inferiority complex? No, the, yeah, the imposter syndrome. imposter syndrome kicks in and you think, I'm just a YouTuber yeah. with a little channel. Yeah. To me, it's still a little channel. Well, it was a little channel back in November, it's yes. 26,000. Not to be um, sniffed at, of course, yeah. but then now, five months later, just about, it's, uh, well, 139? Thousand? Something like that, yeah, nearly. But doesn't that just go to show that people want to know about the things that you're discussing? There's a thirst for people to find out, and I think that leads into what I, I wanted to talk about today, which is reasons to be hopeful. So mm. the fact that there's a thirst for viewers to come to your channel and, and learn about the things and listen to the people that you're interviewing, um, there's a few reasons there. People are understanding what's going on and they, and they want to understand what's going on better and they want to know what they can do about it. So 
I wanted to talk to Richard today about reasons to be hopeful. Yes. Where do you draw your strength from? When you've spent all day reading emails about bad things, bad things, bad things, bad things, what, well, is, it's, it, what is it that gets you through? It, what, the lovely Julia, clearly, <laughs> is the thing. Was that the right answer? Yes. Well. <laughs> oh, thank God for that. <laughs> um, otherwise, it's <laughs> after the... No, right now. Um, it's a journey, isn't it? And you've been on the journey as well. You you start to realise that things aren't quite right. You start looking at alternative media because you realise, and we've all realised for a long, long time, that the mainstream media is is lying to you. You start looking at alternative stuff and you suddenly realise this is a lot deeper than you thought. Yeah. You go down to quite deep levels of... Well, in my case, I would come away some days having watched videos or read articles and literally shake. Yeah. And would feel that the end was only next week or even tomorrow or, yeah. you know, that night. And and then you slowly... you ha and, and I feel you have to go through that journey. I think you do. And I think, I, I think you well know I, I had an evening, I think it was after I'd done my digital ID video, and I think I text you. Yeah. And I think you text me in the morning just to check I was still there. Yeah. But it does it, it, it gets a bit like that. But like you say, you, you reach the bottom of, of the, the sort of crevice, the crevasse, not the cravat. Um, not you, the cravat. You, re you reach the bottom of the cravat, and then after that, you sort of start to clamber your way up and you start to realise, hang on a minute, we're, we're not on our own. Yeah. We're not completely hopeless. And we do have a lot more power and community than, than we perhaps realise. So. Yes. And the more people wake up or go through the awakening, the, uh, the more powerful we get. And that was, the, that was the very much the thing I started to realise is at first you think it's all on your own shoulders. Yeah. Because you're in this little bubble and you're telling the audience and they're telling you stuff and they're telling you stuff that they think you should know and you go, oh Christ, I, don't, I, can't, I can't even look at this, this is really yeah. awful. And then, but then you start to hear about other people and you realize that behind the scene, there's people who've been doing this for years. Yeah. And they know all this and there's organizations and there's, there's things going on, which is what gives me hope. And, and then through, through your own little network, you're starting to hear from different places things like they've already lost yeah and that they're basically throwing everything now because they're trying to salvage they kind of know that it's over but as they go down the monster is throwing his toys out of the thing which is why it, it, it is brilliant for us because they're throwing the the ids the digital ids the central bank digital currency the 15 minute cities the bugs the precision breeding you know, you just reel off the whole list of, you yeah. know, nasty things, not to mention chemtrails and, and whatever else. And they're all doing it all at once. And you think, why are you doing it all at once? Because if you drew it out over 10 years, we might all tr f follow those. But because you're throwing it, so many people are pissed off with it. The ULES thing, you know, yeah. all of this. And so you're getting people then talking and going, are you fed up with this? Yeah. And are you fed up with the other thing? Yeah, I'm fed up with that as well. So I think they've they've made a mistake but they may have been forced to make a mistake because i think behind the scenes there are things that we don't know where there's kind of good guys and bad guys and the good guys are finally yeah winning so it's like the analogy that i could use is the the story of the titanic where there was a fire in the boiler room already mm. so to deal with the fire they threw more coal on it and that's where we're at so we're at the moment where we're just waiting for it to hit the iceberg yeah but then, of course, it's not the Titanic at all because they changed the name and it was, was the, the other. It was the Olympic. Notwithstanding the fact that J.P. Morgan's ancestors were on the boat and were taken down to bring in the Federal Reserve and all that sort of stuff. All of that. But the point is, you can look at it two ways. You can say things are ramping up and the world is getting terrifying, and um, I need Richard to check on me in the morning to see if I'm still alive. Or you can say things are ramping up. Perhaps the people who have this nefarious agenda are stalling and panicking, and maybe we could win this thing. And yes. that's a much better way to look at it. it. I mean, it gives you hope. Even even if it's wrong, you're not being pulled down with the negativity because I think the, it's the negativity is what they want. Yeah. They want people to be down and depressed and think it's all over because then they've got a chance of winning. But the more our vibrations are up and we're positive and we're yeah. laughing at them and going, oh, really? You're really going to do... Do you really think that? And, I mean, look at this, the central bank digital currency. They're trying it in different places, and it's failing. Mm. It's failing across the world. And and that's in countries that, that are 
more manipulative because they're they're what they're less like a lot of us in the west we've been so used to freedoms yeah and uh c certain what we think of freedoms because not everything yeah. is free but if they try it in a country that can be manipulated because it's far away yeah. and they can do stuff without us seeing it and it doesn't work yeah so this doesn't bode, testing doesn't bode well for them trying to roll it out here and the other thing is you know you at the end of the day the argument i always think and come back to is when people say, oh, well, it wouldn't happen, it could never happen, and you just say, well, look at China. Mm. But when when you think of that, China have been indoctrinated for so long. Yeah, absolutely. We're not used to that, and that's why we're, you know, you see a camera and you think, well, what is that bloody thing? Is it measuring, this? is it biometrics? Am I, when I do my shopping, for goodness sake, I don't want that. So I think we in the West, because we've had freedom, they haven't, they haven't given us long enough to indoctrinate us. Yeah. And because of that, I think they, they can't possibly win. So I am, I am very optimistic, and, and that's why I think we should all be laughing at them. I, I agree, and I think when you see these videos of these parks in China, and you, you know, you've even got the children scanning their face before they get access to, to the play park, and you do have to think, if they tried to roll that out in Porth Call in Wales, you know, when they tried to put in the 15-minute city, which is allegedly happening, there's got to be people who just say, just no. Just, just say no. Yeah. We're not having it. We don't want it. And the more people talk about it on their channels, people like yourself, people like me, and other people, you know, big YouTubers, saying we think there's something up with these things that they're rolling out. Yes. The more people realise, and we start to reach people that perhaps weren't thinking in that way. And that's really what I started my channel about, is trying to because I didn't know enough, so I was just using comedy, alg um, allegory sarcasm irony you know all those sort of tricks really to question what was going yeah. on and people used to say to me what was great is that you were getting people who would normally not listen to conspiracy theories yeah but they would say oh here's a bloke who looks fairly reasonable yeah <laughs> and fairly and intelligent respectable. and respectable and all those things they obviously don't know me very well but they they thought well and he's questioning it and it's actually that is a good question why are they doing this yeah why have they introduced that that just seems very strange for a benevolent kind-hearted government and again it's about getting people to so you you live in a city and you're dealing with x but trying to get people to understand that x leads to this and then this and then this and to get them to connect the dots between those yeah. distances based on how we put it across and then i think i i feel like i have although i am a car channel I have this platform, I, well, <laughs> I used to be a car channel. I have this platform, I have this ability to reach people and I feel I have a duty. If I find something out, I feel obligated to share it with people. Yes. Do you find the same as well? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, for the, for, at the moment, I think there's a, an insidious thing that's coming in with these payments. And we saw it during the lockdown, we had the furlough scheme. And now I think that what's happening is that we're we're slowly being made to accept a, a universal credit that we'll have this baseline of money that the government will give us so that we get used to this sort of level of security mm. again it's about oh the government are looking after us we, we're not looking after ourselves enough and so the government would do this and then the next step is that you know you, you can survive so you don't have to work quite so hard so you might not work quite so hard you can sit at home and eat all the crap food and then wham in the winter when all the prices go up and you can no longer pay everything it's like well i can't pay my mortgage or oh, don't worry you don't have to pay the mortgage we'll buy the house and you can just rent for us rent from us and, and you'll be happy and that's it you won't own anything but you will be happy yeah. so i feel because that's already happening i saw on um one of our um co compatriot channels funky prepper was mm -hmm. saying that these payments are coming out and of course it's it's those people who are in need of those payments to begin with but i just feel this is where it won't stop and when you give out free money where does it come from it's never free there's no such thing as a free lunch so who's paying for it it's a very good question so reasons to be cheerful then politically i know you think that perhaps there's something that we should be doing that is outside of the political system mm. um but it seems like 
politically things are happening. There seems to be a lot of interest in um, having some form of government that doesn't comprise the old Labour versus Conservative thing. I, I personally, I think because you can't put really much more than a fag packet, but a uh, fag paper between the two main parties. Yep. They, you know, one party wanted during lockdown this sort of tyrannical um, measures, and then the other party instead of being opposed to anything just wanted more mm. and and we've seen that all the way along since since those dark days so i don't know who you would vote for because you're basically getting the same party it also seems at the moment particularly with like the ulest stuff they're playing the fact that they're opposition to get the goal anyway so we have a labor mayor who rolls out a ulez expansion all the tory people say this is a terrible idea and then the prime minister says well we can't do anything he's got the power because he's the mayor and he's the opposition anyway mm. really is that really you know if they wanted to stop it they'd stop it well do you think in during the during the um the medical emergency we had powers were enabled so that we weren't allowed to leave our house if you are unable to have the power to prevent people from leaving their house. You've got the power to take the cameras down, to get rid of the mayor and put somebody in else. You know, they've got the power if they want to do it. They'd yeah. have the power to stop people coming into the country on rubber boats if they really wanted to do that. But clearly they don't want to do that. Clearly not. And so therefore the whole system is wrong. And I think in the future and i don't know how long this would take but i think people are going to be fed up with it and the whole way of government at the moment will be different it would be nice to find a system that worked for the people and if people were able to get together and create communities i was thinking this last night you know you've got the old neighborhood watch system well what if the neighborhood watch system was actually you know all the dads from your local area for example who got together every other tuesday and had a pint and said right what's going on and maybe it was like a block system maybe it was like a 15 minute neighborhood so all the dads within 15 minutes mm. could form a cohort and all get together and have a drink and any if there were issues in the local area all the mums sorry all the mums <laughs> yeah all the, i'm only saying that because i'm a dad i don't want to get into all that stuff <laughs> but but that's exactly it you know if we were able to form small communities of say yeah. 15 minute communities would be able to affect real change because we'd come together yes i think i think communities i think you could drop the 15 minute bit yes, because yes. it sounds <laughs> it sounds very author authoritarian it does, doesn't it? those, it does. those I mean, numbers I mean, in principle you know it, it sounds okay doesn't it but that's why it's so scary is the fact that there's so much more yeah. underneath what they're suggesting. Well, well all these but, things that they yeah. roll out, they have to have that silver lining to sell it to us. But Make it look nice and convenient. It doesn't take much scratching on the surface, does no, it? That's no, no, the no. worrying the thing. Is thin. But you're yeah. right. A grassroots yeah. is the way forward. It has to be. It has to be from the bottom up. We have to make the decisions. Yeah. Collectively, as individuals, we've got our own so sovereignty. And then as groups, where we get together and we grow our own foods in small little allotments for each other. We look after the people who are infirm and can't do stuff and or who haven't got a lot of money. And we work that way. We find a new type of policeman, which is more of a peace force rather mm. than a police force, and that they are there for our benefit, yeah. not as collectors of of money which is you know you think of the system now everything you do every infringement is about collecting money from mm. you you know you accidentally you know like we're parked here by the sea you probably can't see the sea but the sea is just over there and we are technically in front of some bollards well we're all in the car if somebody came up and you know said oh will you move but you but you know if we moved out just from one of the little park benches there in the blowy south coast <laughs> wind south coast. today and and get the spray of the sea going over some sod would come over here with his thing whack a ticket on and be off because it's all about collecting money instead of going oh excuse me is that your car do you mind moving it because we we might need an ambulance up here yep and that sort of kind natured looking out for everybody they should be working for us not for councils desperately trying to extract money from us we'd love to see a system that protects the people instead of the system quite simply just protecting the system itself exactly yeah because the mean, system exists for what yeah. exactly and this it's one of those isn't it the system only exists because we believe in the system and as soon as we start to put our hands up and say hang on a minute mm. we could do something else here then quite quickly what is a house of cards can 
start to come down and we can start to affect real change just quite simply by talking to our neighbours. And the thing that people don't do anymore is they don't say, why should I? Yes. You know, we're told you've got to pay this for that. Or you've got to do this. And you, and you just need to say, why should I? Now, there may be a legitimate reason. I mean, a reason that's actually useful and helpful, not just it's a legislation or we've deemed that you must pay this because of this. But people just go, oh, OK. People just sort of acquiesce without asking why? Why should I? What's the? Where's the benefit? Where's the crime? What have I done wrong? We live in a society where we're always in the wrong now. We're assumed mm. guilty and we go... We to have, have to prove our innocence. Yeah. Uh, or we pay for it. And that's cure, That's blatantly not a way to live, not a way no. to have a, a civilization. But, but the generations are being grown into this. It's not being... Our constitution, for example, is not being taught at school anymore. No. So people Absolutely. don't know they're sovereign. They don't. I mean, the government thinks it's sovereign, and it can't possibly be sovereign. It's impossible for it to be sovereign because man made the government. Government wasn't a creation of God for the Nature. sake of argument, mm -hmm. and the government isn't a. It's a corporation. It can only operate by the use of real living people. It's because it's just a building and bits of paper. That's all it is. Without us doing the work real people and, and assuming roles of importance and putting on theatrical costumes and saying, oh, look, I'm, I'm an important person, I'm the Speaker of the House, or I'm the Prime Minister, and look at me, I'm... I mean, it's, it's rubbish, because we're the ones that are actually doing the work, so it should be for our benefit, not for the corporation's benefit. Yeah. Absolutely. That was getting nice and hot. And, it uh, is. Oh, so uh, you were saying reasons right, to be bit. hopeful. Hang on. You can put your window down. There we go. Get a bit, a bit it's getting warmer yeah. now. Put the back one down as well. You see? Reasons to be hopeful. Um, yeah. I think I'm quite excited. There's a conference coming up where uh, lots of like-minded people, you were talking about that with Neil Oliver, and there's lots of interesting yes. talks and workshops that you can do at that conference. The Better Way Conference, which is being held in Bath on the uh, 1st to the 4th of June, Neil Oliver is the MC. Yep. Um, I'm hosting a panel. There's lots of panels. I think there's two panels a day, if I remember rightly. Mm -hmm. They're calling them conversations. And these panels have something like five or six prominent guests, people who may not be known to the public, but mm. they are within their field on things like um, AI, uh, health. Chemtrails. Chemtrails, diet, sovereignty. Um, all those sort of things. Yeah. The, the things that we've all been discussing, really, in, in recent times, and government tyranny, that sort of thing. Um, and there's so many, so many fantastic guests turning up. Oh, and absolutely. Yeah. We and, haven't and even been able to delve into to no. with them so far and learn about them yet, have and, we? And some of the, yeah. you know, I've got these panels, I don't know who the hell's on. <laughs> but, the, but the fact that we so have... So I've got to look them up. But the fact that we have a conference <laughs> of people getting together to share ideas, yes. is that in itself is it's quite a big deal. It, I, it, they, they did the first one last year yeah um, and we, it was on the back of our medical problem that we've all suffered and it was mostly medically based because yeah. people had were reeling after that and going oh blimey that was the uh, thing that was supposed to make us better as good as it should have been yeah so, so that the, was about trying to understand what happened what went on yeah. and what is true yeah right and so this one is much more broader because it's it's looking at because we've had all these um, these measures that have been put onto us, like digital IDs, is it a good idea? Um, the 15-minute cities, the the health for us going forward. Is big pharma relying on your GP and pills that you don't know, having only five minutes consultation? Is that really a sensible way of of looking after your health? Should we be more responsible for it? Is is there alternatives? So it's all about that, and about the fact that. We are sovereign. That we should be. We need to take back that responsibility, and say, "Yeah, I'm going to look after my health. I have certain rights. I have freedoms. There is the Bill of Rights, and there is the Constitution, and there is natural law, common law. All all these things. So all these different specialists from all these different fields would be discussing all of this, and people in the audience get a chance to to talk about it. And people online, uh, people can watch virtually at home and witness the whole thing and presumably there'll be a chat thing where they can yeah. they can talk so basically this conference is what it says on the tin looking for a better way through you know and, yeah and, and it's and um, it's going to be i mean you know i've interviewed neil oliver which is great because i've watched him 
him and Mark Stein, Mark Stein's no longer on GB News, unfortunately, because they, you know, bloody Ofcom. Um, but him and Mark Stein were, the, to me, were the stalwarts of, yeah. of GB News. So it would be fantastic to talk to Neil in the flesh and meet him because he's such a charming he's such a nice and un man. Yeah, <laughs> unassuming chap and very erudite. Yeah. And, you know, he knows, he's, he's, he's one of those that likes to read because mm. he's into archaeology and history and he loves to read. So he's dissem disseminated all of this stuff and can articulate it so much better than I can. Um, and so, You're not good with words, but he's phenomenal. Oh, he's absolutely he's phenomenal. His monologues are fantastic. Mm. And, when, and when, when, he, when he's going, he's very, very good. Yes. And so he writes those, I understand, on the morning of because I know a, a chap who helps him a little bit or he runs it past him. This is not to denigrate Neil in any way. No, and, everyone needs support. And, and, and he just goes, I, I haven't really got you know, fully thought, let me just try it. And he just, just comes out with it. Yeah. He's an amazing man. So I'm very much looking forward to, as, as he said in the interview, having a beverage with him, which yeah. would be great. Yeah. So it's these four days with all these different people um, it's going to be phenomenal. So other reasons to be hopeful, if I may. Mm. Go on. More people than ever are homeschooling. Yeah. Oh yes. More people than ever are using cash. Yeah. Well, not ever, but more people are now so more, cash. more cash, more homeschooling. Do you, yeah. do you have any stats on the homeschooling stuff? I don't actually. But I tell you what, I, I was on Twitter this morning and there was some crazy trans thing going on about storytelling. Don't, don't get me started. I know. Okay, let's not go into it. <laughs> but the point the point is, if you don't like what your kids are being taught, taught at school, then whip them out. And that seems to be happening. I, I mean, personally, I would, I would recommend anyone, if you've got any doubts, take your kids out of school. If you've got the capability, do it. If you um, have any doubt, take them out. Absolutely. Uh, yeah. And just the only thing that needs to be said on that is... I can't believe that we're at a stage in life where we need to explain to the people in power that having someone dressed up in scantily clad women's clothing who has a beard and their balls out is not good to put in front of children. Why do we need to explain that? I yeah. know. I mean, it wouldn't be legal if it wouldn't be right if a woman went and did that. So why is it right for a man? It's bizarre. But anyway, reasons to be yeah, cheerful. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So more homeschooling and and cash and more people are are growing things, even if it's just you know a couple of carrots in a in a uh, window, window box. box. Um, uh, so more people are getting their, their hands into the into the earth as such, which is really good for health. Yeah. Um, and more people are using farm shops. Yep. Um, and more people are, are trying to, you know, organic or cl as close to. I, I think more that. people are beginning to get aware of the food quality because it's, it's, conversation is happening. I think yeah. one of the reasons to be cheerful is, is actually this is an amazing time to be alive. It's a very interesting time to be alive, be isn't because it? Because it's, it's, really it's, uh, I just think there is going to be a, a massive sea change over the next seven years, particularly as we get to this magic number of 2030 in which there is this sort of race between the bad guys and the the penal system they want to push us into and the scary stuff and the good guys which is pr pretty much all of us um who can just say no yeah you know our power is to not comply mass non-compliance and just make make these governmental idiots irrelevant absolutely vote them out just mm -hmm. just you know <laughs> people saying there was an mp on twitter and she's trying to protect all this stuff well there's local elections coming up let's get rid of these guys yeah i mean i'm taking a slightly different i i, I i'm not going to vote at all for anybody and in fact i want to completely deregister from the voting system because i don't want to be complicit in it because I, I can't see that that is the future yeah i know they they threaten you with i think 500 quid or something if you aren't registered or something but I'll, i've got to get off it but um i'm certainly not going to i know there is the sort of vote for everybody should vote for independence doesn't matter whether they win or not because that would be a message but whoever's in power i think at the end of the day whoever gets in there will still be puppets under a higher power yeah and i'm not talking about anything religious i'm talking about these people in the think tanks and then the people who are controlling them yeah and so i don't think that i think the governments will always be corrupt and so we need a different system altogether yeah i can go both ways with that i can absolutely see your side of it but my my concern with that side of doing things is 
does that then just hand it to the people? Because if we say we're not voting, mm. are there enough blind Tory voters who would go out and vote Tory even if their local Tory MP had taken a dump underneath their Christmas tree? And I think there are people that would vote that way <laughs> even if that had happened. Yeah, no, it, it, I mean, you, that's true. I think we're not at a stage where enough people would be able to deregister and make it make it um what, what was the word i'm looking for make it um a viable thing yeah um but yeah. again that highlights the importance of your videos neil oliver's videos and all these people that are making videos about current affairs and highlighting what's going on and helping people to connect the dots it's so important that people can see that mm. and i mean what would happen if everybody who wanted to spoiled the ballots um in the sense, and you know, just put a, a, a simple, above, a simple, so. yeah, simple phrase, a common phrase that everyone used. Um, would that? I don't know. I feel like the people How who were counting the votes would just go, "Oh yeah, spoiled ballot," and it yeah, doesn't, it doesn't mean anything. Yeah. Um, I don't know if they have to note down anything that's written or. They do note how many have been spoiled. Mm. So if it was a considerable them. number. Um, would they tell us? <laughs> well, again, this that you know, it's all out of your it control. It would be noticeable, though, wouldn't it? Mm. In the amount of votes that actually fall in. Perhaps a bigger conversation that we need to have, and maybe something like the the uh, the better conference is a place for that sort oh, of discussion. Yeah. I think it's going to be interesting to see what happens in May at the local elections, mm. because that sort of you know, I imagine the Tories will get a good kicking at that point. The question is, what will the Tories do now? Will they? call for an early election mm -hmm. will they wait till september or may next year i think it's may next year where it has to happen i can't i, I don't quote me on that but it, it they've got perhaps three options of when they could call it if they call it really early are if they did did it really early are they calling it really early because they don't actually want to be in power anymore because they've really just messed up and and whatever they do is laughed at and um, and again, the reason for them calling it early would be so that all the people that know that they're about to get in trouble for stuff that they've perhaps done in the last few years. Yeah, and they I think can stuff is leaking out. Um, I think stuff is leaking out. There is a, a court case uh, in South Africa, I believe, that will happen in September. And a lot of the medical thing that we've just gone through will be exposed because a lot of papers that are not for public consumption will have to come out in order for a court case to take place. And if that happens, the repercussions of that are going to trickle around the world. And if it's seen that governments have acted without the benefit of, um, with, have acted detrimental to the people, and more than detrimental, if they've acted... With intent to cause harm. With intent to cause harm. I mean, that's the end of that party, but it's it, basically it's the end of government. Yeah. And that's what I'm hoping for, because I think a lot of people, not everybody, but a lot of people now are waking up to the fact that maybe what happened was not only was it not right to force it on people or to scare people with it, but actually it was totally nefarious to do so. Yeah. That actually there were, it was malicious. So, and if that's the case, government's over. Yeah. Because how do you how do you recover from that? Because you can't then just say, oh, well, the government's over, so we'll roll in the opposition, when the opposition were calling for more restrictions based on everything that was going on. As you say, that is the end of all of it. Yeah, because if the people know that the elites and the government were conspiring against them, to, to conspire against the people you are serving, they're not going to put that anybody in in that situation. They're just going to have to say, well, this is wrong. We, we're going to set up a different system because that system is, we know it's corrupt and we've let you get away with it, but there's a level of corruption that you reach where you go, no. There's a big difference between accidental medical negligence because perhaps there was a rush. And I'm and, sure that's how it would be sold as. And the other side, which mm. is... <laughs> doesn't bear it things doesn't no it doesn't bear i mean and and of course sadly i think there's a lot of people who took something under guidance of the government and were also in and of themselves quite vehement that other people took mm. it and they are going to need to be able to save face because they're going to need to be able to say do you know what we got it wrong 
hands up. And and yeah. and the the people who perhaps were put on by them also need to be able to say that's okay mm. because actually we're all on the same side. We're all against these tyrants who pushed it on us. So we can conclude again by finishing with just coming together. Mm. That coming together of people and minds is what's going to get us through this yeah. and move us on to whatever the next stage is. Yeah, it's one of the few benefits that came out of the last few years, isn't it? People awakening, the um, more people getting out into the countryside and uh, communities, it built up a bit yeah. of community spirit. So, yeah, yes. Yeah. <laughs> Lastly, I have a present for Richard. Oh, close your eyes. Closing. But it's a present where you have to decide. Okay, uh, you can open. Okay. Would you like? Yes, please. The green electrical Porsche, <laughs> <laughs> or would you like the classic 911 Carrera 2.7 to go in your office? Oh, to go in well, my well, your studio. I I'm going to let Julia because she's better at cars than I am. A bit more of a petrol head than you. Yeah, right? she's she would know. Ooh, um, There's a lot ooh. hanging on this on my channel. Do you Is go? It? Do you go EV or classic? Well, I I, I must say I my. Previous car was a hybrid, but definitely classic. Classic. It's got to be classic. Yeah. The correct decision. Hey! This one will now be taken outside and shot. Oh. Um, <laughs> right. Thank you very much, Richard, for uh, uh, and Julia for spending time in the Jag. Uh, no, it's a lovely car. It's and not bad for the money, is it? Um, mm -hmm. Very good. Yeah. And we like very the we like the signage, the official vehicle. Absolute and total chaos, which, um, which we've helped to provide. Yes, we have. <laughs> uh, brilliant. Well, I look forward to watching some more videos. You have got some. You have an interview that you need to go and get to. Oh yes. And uh, everybody, I'd I say make sure you subscribe. But everybody already is subscribed to to Richard Vobes, aren't they? Of course they are. Of course any, they any are. decent person would be subscribed. But if you haven't, then. Make sure you dis d describe. describe. Make sure describe. you describe, describe all of us. Thank you, uh, Jeff. It's been absolutely fantastic to sit in your car, be on your show, have the lovely Julia with me, and discuss all that nonsense that we just talked about. And maybe there'll come a time when you go back to walking around and talking about nature, and I make car videos. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Actually, there's a tree in the meantime. There. <laughs> in, the, in, the, uh, in the meantime, the English couple is doing some walking. Yes. So you got, if, if you want to see the uh, the nature and the walking around and less of the um, cons, the, the truth, the truth, <laughs> then head over to the English couple. Thank you very much for having me along. With no me. problem at all. Thank you. Still, YouTube's most boring car channel.